I'm Jeff McCausland, founder and CEO of Diamond Six Leadership and Strategy. You know, here in early December, I was asked to make a radio interview as we passed December 7th, 2018, 77th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. And in the course of my preparation for that particular interview, I learned that this year, for the first time in many, many years, or as far back as anybody can remember, no survivors of the USS Arizona were able to attend. As best we know, there are five living survivors. The youngest is 94 years of age. And these elderly gentlemen just were too physically infirmed to go to Hawaii for this annual commemoration. You know, we do workshops at times using Pearl Harbor. We've done that for organizations physically in Hawaii. We've done that at various sites around the country, uh, oftentimes using museums that lend themselves to a discussion of the effects of the Second World War and the attack on Pearl Harbor. And as I've worked through these particular preparations and these workshops, and once again this interview this coming year, I was impressed upon me something which is the importance of diverse teams. Let's think about that for a moment with respect to Pearl Harbor. You know, if you think about what happened on December 7th, 1941, one of the questions that many people ask me frequently is, why did the Japanese attack? And why did Germany and the Italians declare war on the United States on the 10th of December? Most Americans don't know the fact that they declared war on us. For those three days that intervened, the United States was prepared to head to a war in the Pacific and frankly, probably ignore what was going on in Europe. Well, in my research, and there were a number of other reasons, but one of the reasons why the Japanese, Germans, and Italians decided to go to war was they made the following assumption, that their nations were of a superior state to the United States due to racial superiority and racial purity. Hitler even described the United States one time as a mongrel nation, and they saw that as a weakness that they could capitalize and lead them to eventual victory. But let me tell you a couple stories that illustrate this point about the strength of diverse teams very poignantly from that very, very terrible day back there in 1941. On the USS West Virginia, when it was attacked, the sailors quickly rushed to their battle stations. One of those who went to his battle station was a seaman by the name of Dory Miller. Dory Miller was an African American. He was the fleet boxing champion as the heavyweight, a huge man um, who was a very effective sailor, but he was a mess steward because back in 1941, African-American sailors were not allowed to uh, operate in more, uh, more direct battle station, manning guns and the like. Miller went to his station and quickly discovered that his, the captain of the ship had been badly wounded on the bridge. Miller made his way to the bridge and carried his captain to safety, though sadly the captain shortly died thereafter. Then Miller went out on the deck and manned a machine gun. And even though he had never been trained on operating a machine gun and began to engage Japanese aircraft. There's a lot of arguments about how many aircraft Jet Dory Miller shot down, but we know he shot down at least one. Here we have an African-American sailor who stepped up when his team aboard the USS West Virginia really needed him. Sadly, Dory Miller would receive the Navy Cross for that and would disappear later on when a ship he was manning was sunk off in the South Pacific. Second of all, the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the, the command in Hawaii called up all of the ROTC cadets at the University of Hawaii and sent them out to man various defensive sites around the island. And these young cadets were out there doing that. Most of them were of Japanese-American descent because of the size of that population in Hawaii. Unfortunately, in January 1941, the decision was made to intern Japanese-Americans, about a quarter of a million were in fact interned in camps in California, Arizona, and elsewhere. And these young ROTC cadets, it was directed that they be disarmed because their families were oftentimes heading off to internment camps. Many of these youngsters did in fact though join the army in the days that followed, became part of the very famous 442nd Combat Regiment that was made up solely of Japanese Americans with white officers. Sent to Europe, the 442 would gain enormous recognition, would have more Purple Hearts, more awards for valor, no desertions throughout the entirety of the war, even though these Japanese Americans were fighting for their nation while their families were being held in internment camps in the western part of the United States. So in reality, diversity for the United States was not a weakness, as Hitler and Tojo assumed, but rather a strength. This was clearly put to the, t to the test throughout the war, and we saw larger examples. Women rallied and went off to the workplace, and really were the fundamental building block of the industrial capacity of the United States that was so fundamental to winning the war. 
Tuskegee Airmen and the African American soldiers more broadly contribute enormously to our success in World War II. And I think all leaders, even today, can take a lesson from this as they reflect on this anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And that is the benefits to having a diverse team. For a number of reasons, this makes the stream stronger. It expands the number of creative ideas that are available. It gives us better contact with our customers or our stakeholders. It gives us access to a wider range of problem solvers. It reduces tensions and hostilities which may exist within a team due to demographic differences. And last but not least, it gives each one of us as a leader an increased appreciation of different people, ideas, and general respect for others. So as you think about that never-ending process of building your team and improving your team, consider the value of a diverse team and remember Pearl Harbor, Dory Miller, and the men of the 442nd Combat Regiment. Thanks. Have a great day.